Welcome back. We've all owned or seen rifles that are just plain unattractive, to be blunt, ugly rifles. Uh, over time, I, I've picked up a few, and the four that I'm going to show you today are each unique in their own way. And we'll start with a Peruvian Mauser, and we're going to test, test them. We're going to shoot them, and we'll hopefully show you the targets. And we'll see how accurate these rifles are. None of these cost over 200. The least expensive cost $40. And um, yeah, I've checked the barrels and done all the usual safety checks. So we'll start with this Peruvian Mauser. And here it is. And you can see that this is, uh, this is a well-loved, well-used rifle. It's got a walnut stock. Um, I guess the most dramatic thing that you can see right away is the wire that holds the, f the, the wood on the top of the forend. And the f rear sight was removed, so somebody spliced in a, a piece of wood. They did a good job of it, actually. Um, I tried to take the wire off, but then the back of the forend pops up, so I just thought I'd leave it the way I bought it. And this uh, front barrel band... I don't think that's original, but I mean it, it works with this sling which also came with the rifle. No, no front sight and that's about the front end of the rifle. You can see it's, it's got, you know, <clears throat> recoil lug, quite a bit of wear and oil in the walnut itself. The bolt, the bolt runs okay. I made no effort to improve this cosmetically. You can see the you can see a little bit of the Peruvian crest peeking out from under the the one-piece weaver base. And I'll flip the gun around in a second, but we should spend a moment on the bolt. So you can see the claw extractor is rusted. The bolt handle is modified and the the groove for the bolt handle is has been, you know, chiseled away or filed away. There's a crack here. Uh, there's no crack on the tang. You can, you can see the tang is okay, and the buttstock is okay, and then it has a steel butt plate, which is also routine. Uh, there's a rear sling swivel. The bottom metal is, it's okay. It's rusted, but it's okay. And then this side, um, you can see it's actually an excellent Mauser. And the Peruvian crest is now visible, a little bit more visible under the rail. So getting back to the bolt handle, somebody did a decent job welding here. And then they ground it off. And, and then on the top side, I guess there must have been a gap, you know, a gap in the weld. So it looks like JB weld. And then I noticed that in this hole lightening the bolt handle might have come this way too anyway something started growing in there but i just left it so that's the um that's the first peruvian mauser sporterized 7 by 57. wanted to show you one other thing just for um all the young people that that um i'm really happy are are on the channel if you do buy a rifle like this you know, of course, get it checked by a gunsmith, but if you want to do a crude check, because you may not have the right instruments, you can take a cartridge and you can simply put the cartridge, the bullet in the, in the muzzle like that. This simple test just tells you whether the rifling will have some kind of purchase on the bullet. So if you're sure that, that this is a 7 by 57 or a 30 out 6 or whatever, then just take a round and put it in the muzzle and you can see the bullet only goes in part way which means that the rifling is going to grab the bullet when the, when the rifle is fired and that's what you want so if the cartridge goes all the if the bullet goes all the way into the bore um, that means you know and rattles around that means that the bore has opened up or there's been too much erosion anyhow this rifle checks out as as ugly as it may be uh, we're going to fire it now and see how it shoots and and um, hopefully we'll be surprised pleasantly.
So this is the 7x57 Peruvian Mauser uh, modified. And people always ask me, what am I shooting? So this is PPU. This is made in Serbia, Novak Djokovic's country. I've used it for years, just great ammunition, usually very well priced. And what is it? It's a 175 grain uh, full metal jacket boat tail. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Okay, so that's um, three rounds. Um, you know, people have a lot of opinions about triggers, and I'm sorry, I, I, I don't have that many opinions. It, it, the trigger is fine. It's a two-stage trigger, so I had to, you know, take up some creep. After that, um, it worked the way it should. You, you saw that it fed and ejected quite well. I guess we'll have to um, take a look at the target and then move on to the next gun. So. Well, so, and it's still intact, so you have to push the follower down. And there it is, closed up. Not a pretty sight, but um, still a great rifle in its own way. We'll see how it, how it groups. You know, most of the time when I buy these um, older rifles, sometimes the rifling is really worn, but I'm always surprised how well it shoots. Of course, a lot of it depends on me but we'll take a look at this target and see what it did. So there we have the 7x57 Peruvian Mauser. And I would say that's a respectable group. Uh, I noticed the scope uh, is slightly bent. This can happen if the, you know, the base is not properly installed. And even with the bent scope, uh, we got a decent I, I consider that a very decent group. Uh, what I do is I just take masking tape and it saves me changing targets all the time. And now we'll move on to the next, we'll move on to the next rifle and see what, the next one is an eight by 57 with no scope. So in some ways uh, it should be easier to shoot because I don't have to worry about the scope flying off and things like that. So after firing pretty well any rifle, but especially with an older rifle, I like to look at the cases that, that, um, that I just fired. So this is that, that um, Serbian PPU ammo, the loaded rounds, and here's the brass that was ejected. And you know, what you look for is, uh, you know, is, is there a crack? Is the shoulder deformed? Is there some kind of anomaly? Um, you know, I, I even kind of line up the case with the car loaded round. And after you've done an awful lot of shooting, I'm not sure if I'm a member of the Million Round Club yet, but um, you, you get an idea whether the brass is stretched. If it stretches in the chamber, it'll stretch in here. What I can do is when I get home, I can cut this brass in half and I can see if this part of the case has moved away from the case head or if there's been any movement inside because the brass moves, it expands and contracts. Anyway, generally speaking, I, I have to say this, this uh, Peruvian Mauser uh, not only shot exceptionally well, but I see no problem with the chambering, you know, because I don't know who put that barrel on or where the barrel came from or who had the chambering reamer. Uh, there's a slight dent here that's from hitting the ground. So now we're going to move on to the next ugly rifle. Uh, this is actually a super scarce rifle for me anyway. It's, you can see it has the Mauser banner. Uh, got to get some light on that. Mauser banner 1934 and then on the side of the action quite clearly you can see Mauser Werk. Age Oberndorf, Amnecker, 
So I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And we've got some markings happening here. And of course, this has been heavily modified. Uh, I used to call this my Prada rifle. You might have seen it on Patreon or wherever I made the video. It, this looks very odd, doesn't it? It reminds me of a high-heeled shoe. Uh, somebody went to a lot of effort. It looks like plexiglass has been shaped. And I think that was so that the owner had kind of a greater purchase on the stock. I believe this is just the original military stock, but they've modified everything and they put a recoil pad. And there's been some adventures happening here um, with the wood. But altogether, I mean, it's intact. It's, there's, no, there's no tank crack. Um, the bolt is slick. And of course, these are first class actions even to this day you can't really buy a better action and we'll have a look at the bottom metal it's not as rusty as that 7 by 57 oh and I should show you that the trigger is some kind of you know it's a Timney or I don't know some some other trigger it's not the military trigger. I, I almost always prefer the military triggers. I like the two-stage thing, but that's just me. And we'll see how this shoots. This one, by the way, is eight by 57, even though for years, I thought it was a 30 out six for some reason. But we'll, um, we'll take a few shots with this rifle and see what happens. So first off on that first rifle, I forgot to put on my um, shooting glasses, sorry about that. A lot going on, you know, and anyway, my mistake, so I got the shooting glasses now. Please don't, you know, copy me. Smooth shooting uh, rifle, very, very slick steel. So we'll take a look at this target now. Okay, so here we are. This is the uh, 1934 Mauser, Banner Mauser, with the uh, aperture sight uh, in, in the rain, not that that should matter. And we got a decent, decent group. I mean, this is not target rifle accuracy, but uh, I think it's about as good as one can reasonably expect. Maybe these bullets should be closer, but with human error, and I'm a big human error, um, this, this is quite reasonable. Anyway, I tape over the holes, so. Okay, this is the third ugly rifle. Uh, this one has a modified bolt handle. You can see someone had an idea. I'm assuming this is to clear a scope. Uh, hard to say. There's a lot of clearance there, but anyway, you just never know. These old rifles have such a history, you can only guess at it. This one, the stock has been uh, heavily modified. You can see someone rasped it down to try to make it, I don't know, lighter, I guess. And it's got the, the nice cupped butt plate, which is actually pretty good. And uh, like the other rifles, I don't think there are any numbers matching on anything. Yeah, no, nothing matches anything. And then this is kind of interesting. These scope bases, uh, you can see that the person put epoxy here and it looks like a piece of a weaver uh, ring in here so that the scope ring does, the base doesn't slide for, forward on the base. They also took away the rear sight, which is really sad, but I'll find one. And then um, they took away the front sight bead uh, as well. 
<clears throat> this is in 308. You can just barely make out here, maybe. See, it's stamped 7.62. And my guess is this is one of those Israeli Mausers. So it's a very decent, if not excellent, Mauser action. And the manufacturer code will likely be under this front receiver ring. And you can check, uh, you can find out which of the Mauser plants in Germany uh, this, where, it was, where this action was made. And there are some markings on it which can be investigated as well. Um, I'm, I'm guessing this is a Berno. I, I'm thinking I see a Z in a circle, but anyhow, bottom metal is fine. The stock is intact. It's walnut. Everything kind of looks okay. So this is in 308. Easy finding ammo. And the bore looked good. And I checked the bore doing that primitive bullet test and Everything looks the way it should. So we'll take some shots now and, and see what happens. stock is quite low or the scope is quite high um, so you can't really get good cheek weld but it's still fine scope is surprisingly clear it's a weaver um, variable but I just left it on whatever power setting So did you see the resistance when I was closing the bolt? Um, my experience is typically that means the bullet is, in, is actually engaging the rifling early. So you have to kind of force it into the rifling, which some people say is very good for accuracy. Everything else is routine Mauser. Now we'll go and take a look at the target. So whenever I see this kind of thing, um, which is very typical for for any group if you've done any range work at all you usually see one bullet that's separate from the others and that's a, I, I almost always just attribute that to me to the shooter so the rifle probably could put this bullet right next to these but for some reason you know I moved or whatever it is so I view this as like a, a very accurate very accurate rifle I just have to adjust the the scope if I, you know, I want to do it, do some hunting with it or whatever. All right, here's the last of the ugly rifles. Um, this one is actually pretty complete except for the stock. It's missing the cupped butt plate. It's for the sling, of course. Uh, I don't think any numbers match. And this is another C7.62. So that's an Israeli. I would think Mauser, but I mean any arsenal can do that on the other hand. This one is actually beautifully marked. You can see model 98 there. So I'm not sure, you know, whether it was an Airford or a Zauer or, but I can check. There are some screw holes here from a scope base that I guess disappeared, but there, there is a number there. So I could, I could check, you know, where it was made. And like I said, I don't think any numbers match and uh, you know if you want to be really thorough you can get go and no go gauges to check uh, the headspace but uh, most of the time if somebody went to the trouble of, of rebarreling or rechambering the headspace will be okay so what else can I tell you about this one I like that the sights are there the bottom metal is fine and this looks like one of those beach wood stocks which totally serviceable actually and it still has the um, yeah it still has the two-stage um, military trigger just the way I like it so we'll fire three rounds with this and see how this does
Okay, that's the, the last of the four uglies. So let's go see. So once again, military open sites, not an aperture. And actually, I, I view that as a completely acceptable, if not very fine uh, group. And we have one that, uh, once again, like I said, you usually get a couple and then a flyer, as they call it. And it's not, that's not even much of a flyer. I don't know what that would measure out to, but definitely the accuracy of all four of those rifles uh, does not equate to the looks. You, you pick those up and you kind of doubt that they work, or if they work, they won't be accurate. But the truth is otherwise. Well, much as I like that Mauser Banner 1934, I have to say of, of the four uglies, uh, this 7x57, I mean, it's definitely been changed the most. And this is definitely not an appealing rifle, but the cartridge is excellent. The accuracy is excellent. We fired this more and the groups only improve and uh, I just I, I mean it sounds funny to say so but I wouldn't hesitate to to go deer hunting with this and I think this this rifle cost me $40 uh, I would get rid of this uh, wire and I think I will because it kind of catches my finger where it's um, twisted together it hasn't cut me yet but it might so other than that, you know, this is ready for deer season, <laughs> as funny as that sounds. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. That's a different video for sure. And I guess if you run across one of these, it may not be as bad as it looks. All right, take care until we meet again. Bye.